Well, we are about to step into, guys, I'm going to get really excited just for a moment. I'm hoping you're going to do the same. We're going to begin a fast. How good is that? I know, I know. It's like a fast, really. We've just had so much turkey. We've had so many sweeties and all the different things you might have had at Christmas. But as we begin 2024, I want to challenge you, and that is the key word, I want to challenge you to fast. I want to challenge you to think about fasting. In fact, as we start this new year, here's what I believe the Lord has sent. We are going to break new ground. Amen? We are going to break new ground. Now, part of that's going to be, and I know some people's praying and believing and are excited for it. We're going to break ground believing next door with Project Possible. Praise the Lord. Come on, we are going to break some ground there. And then we have already begun to break ground in Latvia because our building work has started in Latvia. So the Lord has decided that us guys are going to be branched out in two fronts, and the work has begun. But as we would step into that, I want to challenge you to say, hey, what if you need something to break? We talked a lot about our hearts this last year, or the end of last year. What if we need something to break in our hearts, or maybe it's here (laughs) in our minds? What if we need something to break there? What if there's a challenge that God needs to put on us, and it starts with fasting, where we literally say to ourselves, less of me, more of him. I don't know if you've ever fasted before, but I'm going to challenge you to think about it today. We're going to see the word of God. If you've fasted before, I'm going to encourage you to do it again, and I'm going to challenge you that God has got great things in store as you would go forward in this fast. Here's what it says in Matthew 27, verse 50. You're going to read it together. Now, the context is Jesus has just been to, uh, to the cross. Uh, the earth has went dark. Everything's just, uh, to, no, no, no one knows what's going on. The Lord does, but the people are confused. They're not sure what's going on. And here's what it says in verse 50. And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. He cries out, it's done. It's finished. Your work is done. Death's defeated. Sin's defeated. The grave's defeated. Everything's done. Everything I said has happened. But the disciples and the people are a bit confused. They're not really sure what's going on. But this is what he cries out. And it says at that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn from top to bottom. Wow. If you don't know what the context of this is, is that we were held back from the inner presence of God because it was too holy for us and we were too sinful. And if anybody got too close to the presence of God, they died. They couldn't make it because you had to be pure, absolutely pure and perfect. And so it makes sense that Jesus would come. And as Jesus would lay down his precious life, that that veil was torn in two. And you're thinking like a veil, thin veil, maybe on a, on, on a lady going to get married. No, no, this thing was inches thick. And the only way it could be split in two was supernatural power. And it says, at that moment, the rock split, the earth split, the earth began to shake, a shake, and that veil was torn in two. And what it said to everybody else, especially the enemy, is there's no more barriers. There are no more barriers. I have done it once for all. And if you know me and I know you, you can come into my presence. Let's go. So I want to encourage you today. The Lord is speaking deeply into our hearts. It says this, that at that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two. The earth shook, the rocks split, the tombs broke open, open, and the bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. What a moment. Have you ever seen any graves coming back up? <laughs> like, have you ever seen any people jumping up from the grave and go, hey, here's me. Uh, you thought I was gone, but I'm back. You know, it's like, it's the original Arnold Schwarzenegger. You know, they're, they're back. They're, they're, they're come alive again. And I want to say, in that moment, this is what happened. People came back alive. These holy people jumped up from the grave, and it says that they went into the cities. And they appeared to many people. It said, when the centurion and those who were with them guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that had happened, they were terrified and exclaimed, surely he was the son of God. Wow. Come on. I I want to bring it to 21st century, 2024. He is the son of God. The, The centurion was going, well, he must have been. No, no, he was. And it doesn't matter what he thinks. It's who he is. And I want to encourage you today, you may be confused about Jesus, uncertain about Jesus, or not sure quite what he's all about. Well, he is the Son of God, and when he moves, things happen. And I want you to see that this is the God that we serve, a God who breaks ground, a God who just, even as things looked all over, he shook the nations, he split stones in two, he, the dead were raised, because when anything happens connected to him, things have to move, mountains have to move, things have to change. And so here's my challenge at the start of a brand new year, and maybe you're like, I love New Year's, or maybe you're like, I hate New Year's, or it's just another day in the diary for me, but the challenge still stands true. Who do you serve? Do you serve this God? 
Because if you serve this God, then things are going to happen. And they're going to happen through you. If this is the God that you serve, then nothing is impossible. Is this the God that you serve? Here's what Joshua said all the way back in the Old Testament. As for me and my family, we serve the Lord. Now, it wasn't, I get it, some people have it in their walls, some people have it in a picture frame, and it's a nice message, and maybe it's a cool tattoo even, but no, this is Joshua in the midst of the battle saying, I know that there's chaos all around, I know that there's men's and women's hearts feeling all around, and it looks like God's not moving, but as for me and my house, we serve the Lord, we serve the Lord. And I want to say to you, as 2024 kicks off, we have a challenge, and possibly the biggest challenge of our lives. Is it me first, or him first? Come on, church, let's get real just for a moment. Is it him first or is it me first? Is it his way or is it my way? Ever been in that trap? I've been in that trap. I used to love singing my way, Frank Sinatra. But, you know, it's like, is it my way or his way? There is a big difference to it. And how many times have we got ourselves in trouble because we said to ourselves, well, I'm not changing. <laughs> like, mm. yeah. And we get full of self-righteousness. And we get full of, like, our own self-pride and our own ideas. And we say, I'm not changing. But I'm so glad that we serve a God who came, changed this location in splendor and paradise and came and died on a cruel cross because he said, my people need to go free. My people need to know love. My people need freedom. And I want every separation and every barrier to be broken in two. This is the God that we serve. And I want to encourage you today that we have questions to wrestle with. And I want to challenge you with a few this morning or this afternoon as we think about this and get a bit deeper into what the Lord sent. Here's a couple of tough, tough questions I thought about earlier. Not exhaustive. There's probably many more. But I, I thought of this. Is it all going to be on my terms this year or his terms? You know, you ever seen a contract? Maybe you bought a sofa one time and you're paying it off. Maybe you got a phone contract and they said, look at the contract. You never really did. But you probably should. But what it says in a contract is terms. It's got these bullet point lines. You're never really sure what they mean, but it just means you're being, you're being signed up to something. You're going to be committed. You're going to be, you're going to be in until they say you're out. And it has all these terms. And whenever you sign at the bottom, bottom line, whenever you sign at the bottom, every term that's above, activated on you. I want to say to you that this is, this is how God works in our lives. It's like when we sign to him, we give up our rights. When we give our lives to him, when we said yes to Jesus, we become his co-heirs. We become sons and daughters of the living God. But we also signed up to live in the ways of God and to follow in his footsteps. And if we don't, then we're living in the opposite way. We're living in a different place. So here's my challenge. Whose terms do we live by this year? Do we live by God's terms or our terms? Now, maybe you're unsure what the terms are. Read the word of God. There are terms that are going to bless you. There are terms that are going to help you. There are principles and values that are going to change your life. But sometimes it won't be easy. We're talking about, to talk about fasting in just a few moments. It's not easy to fast. It's a sacrifice. It's a cost. And it's a challenge. But it's a way that God's laid down for us. Number two question could be this. What, do I, what past hurts do I need to let go of? What past hurts? You know, you know in a room this size, everybody's hurting from something. There's someone or something that's hurt you, and maybe you've overcome it, or maybe you haven't, or maybe you've partly dealt with it, or maybe you haven't, or maybe you're like, definitely not am I dealing with it because they hurt me, and that's just that. But we're all dealing with hurt. It's just part of the life that we're in because we live in a world that's fallen and broken, and it's got sin in it. But here's what I've discovered with the things of God, is that the only way to live is forward. The only way. The only way is like, I'm moving forward. Am I moving perfect forward? No, but I'm moving forward nonetheless, and he will help me no matter what. And, but if I choose to not let him, then I'll stay where I am. And, and it might say 2024 in the calendar, but it's 1998 to you. It might say 2024 in the calendar, but it might as well be 1990 or whatever year it has been or whatever time it has been because you're still hurting from what's been before. And hurt is normal, but to hold on to it is not. You have to choose to let go. We read in the Old Testament, I think it's the book of Zephaniah, it says this, that Zephaniah decided he was going to be a prisoner of hope. I mean, I love that. It's like, if I'm going to be a prisoner, I'm going to be a prisoner of hope. But I want to encourage you that when we hold on to unforgiveness, what are we doing? We're keeping ourselves in our own self-made prison. And it's no good for anybody, especially not ourselves. And so what about in 2024, already a year ahead? We decide to say, look, Jesus, it's your terms. It's not mine. I'm going to let go of things that have hurt me. I'm going to resolve things that have been ineffective in the past. And I'm going to move forward because forward is my only option. That is what you have called me to. What about this one? And sometimes this is the hardest one. How am I becoming more like Jesus? 
Come on, this is a question that all of us must bear and all of us must wrestle with. And so I understand these questions are a fight sometimes. You ever get a question and it's like, will you do this? And you think, yourself, oh, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know if I really want to do this. I asked someone a question this week. I loved it. This is what they replied back to me. They said, I was trying to decide between yes and no, so I just said yes. <laughs> I was like, brilliant. That's what I want to hear. Come on. Come on, like, sometimes you have to wrestle with these questions. And sometimes we're wrestling with, will I buy this thing or that thing? Will I go this way or that way? But what if we started to begin to wrestle with, how am I becoming more like Jesus? Number one, he's working in your life. But number two, we have a part to play. What effort are you putting in to becoming more like him? Reading, praying, worshiping, uh, talking differently, acting differently, going to meetings, going to prayer times, whatever it be. I'm sure you can think of a bunch of a whole million things. But how are you becoming more like Jesus? We do have a part to play in that, and it's something we got to think about. Here's what Matthew chapter one, or chapter four, verse one says. This is Jesus. We're thinking about because we live in a gospel and we live in a world where it's not just about what you say; it's about what you do. And it's the same as Christians. It's not just about what you say. In fact, the word says, don't just be hearers of the word, but doers of the word. Let's be people that actually do things. It's the same with Jesus. He didn't just talk about it. He went to the cross. Same with all the apostles in the Bible. They didn't just talk about it. They did it. Some of them died for their faith. They did not resurrect, but they went to glory with him. Some of them lost everything. They did not get it back, but they did it for the goodness of God. They did it for the glory of God because they're following his footsteps. Some went a certain way, and they got blessed beyond their wildest dreams because they served the Lord. I mean, the, the, the goal is not to get a whole bunch of things. The goal is to serve him, but the goal is to move. The goal is to be men and women of action. Here's what it says, Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. Then Jesus, talking about Jesus, of course, was led by the Spirit. I want you to notice something here. We're going to discover that Jesus went into the wilderness and he went for 40 days and he fasted. But I want you to notice how he got there. It says that he was led by the Spirit. Led by the Spirit into the wilderness. And my mind gets drawn back to Genesis 1, 2, and 3 when it says that the Lord created the heavens and the earth and then on the sixth day he created man and he said it was they were very good. And by Genesis 3 what you notice is that Jesus, uh, not Jesus, but God himself walked with Adam in the garden in this beautiful garden garden that knew no limits that was always abundant it had waterfalls I'm sure it had birds that were always in tune it, like it just was paradise beyond belief but notice where Jesus is walking this day a few thousand years later it's still I'm led by the spirit I'm led by God but I'm not going to paradise at this moment I'm going to the wilderness I'm going to the wilderness and my first challenge for us today as we're stepping into this new year is who is leading your life? Everybody's leading your life. Somebody's leading your life. Maybe your kids are leading your life. And you're like, ah, my, my kids are leading my life. Maybe you're leading your life. Maybe somebody else is leading your life. Maybe it's just dawned on you that your boss is leading your life. I want to say to you, everybody's trying to lead your life, but the only person that should is God himself. He's the only one. The Spirit of God needs to lead your life. And even Jesus, he comes to this earth, and he's fully God, but fully man, and he leaves a principle. And he says, guys, here's what I need you to know. The Holy Spirit leads my life. I do not lead my own life. Now, that is so, like, way out there when it comes to the contrast of this life, because it's all about you lead your own life, you live, you do whatever you want to do, you're independent, you do this, you do that. It's your world, you know, you're just living in it. Uh, in my world, well, you know, and it's, it's just self, 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 self. And yet, what does God demonstrate? What does Jesus demonstrate? Selflessness to come, walking, led by the Spirit, and I'll, do, I'll go wherever he leads me. And you're going, well, that sounds all right until you find out he led him to the wilderness. And you're going, Lord, why did you lead him to the wilderness? I could get it if you lead him to the beach. I'd like the beach right now. It's too cold outside. I could get it if you led him to the ice cream shop. That would be fun as well, wouldn't it? I could get it, last ice cream for the fast. You know, I could get it if you led me to the shops because there's some good sales on. I could even get it if you'd lead me to a Bible study or you'd lead me to a prayer time or a worship time. Wouldn't all of that be lovely? That, that's just so nice. But it says that the Spirit of God led the Son of God to the wilderness. And you're going, what? Now think about wilderness just for a moment because it's easy to get past this. This is like a beach, but without, sun, without the, the, the sea and without the deck chairs or the sun loungers, without the ice cream van. You know, it's just, it's just the sound. <laughs> it's just the sound. And it's really warm during the day, and it's really cold at night, and there's no water, and it's a place where you die. 
is, is, if you stay too long, it's a place that you die. Why would the Son of God be led by the Spirit of God into the wilderness? Well, we have to find out. Here's what it says. It says that the Spirit of God led the Son of God into the wilderness to be, maybe your translation says tempted, but I want to give you a better definition, tested. Tested. Anybody ever been tested before? Ah, I know Diana has, for sure. Uh, anybody ever been tested before? It's no fun to be tested. But what do you learn in testing? You learn what's proven. You learn what's correct. There's no guesswork left anymore. If you go for a test, whatever the result is, nine times out of ten, it's true. It could be a mistake, of course, but nine times out of ten, it's true. You learn who you really are. You learn what your ability is. You learn what your capacity is in that moment at that time. Is it forever more final? No, but you get a glimpse. You get a finality. You get a fact of what's going on here and now. And it says the Spirit of God led the Son of God into the wilderness to be tempted, to be tested. And then you read on, and it says by whom? The devil. Wow. Wow. I mean, this might already be messing up all of your thoughts because you're going, well, God would never lead me into a bad place. God would never lead me into a testing place where the devil would test me. Oh, yes, he would. He'd even do it to his son because we live in a broken, fallen world, and Jesus needs to learn some things just like we need to learn some things, that if I don't do it with him, I won't make it. That if I don't learn total dependence on God, I won't make it. That if I don't go through the challenges and the testing with the Spirit, I won't make it at the times when I need to make it. And Jesus, you know what this moment was in his life? Do you remember? He was just about to start his unbelievable earthly ministry where he would cast out demons, heal the sick, multiply bread, multiply fishes. He was just about to do all the cool stuff. But before he did all the cool stuff, he went to the hardest place on the planet the wilderness with the devil to be tested. And I want to jump to what happens when he comes out of it. Here's what it says in Luke chapter 4, verse 14. And Jesus returned, not just led by the Spirit now, but powered by the Spirit. Wow. He discovered something. He discovered someone. He discovered something that he needed to know for the next part of his life journey. That if I don't have the Spirit, and if I don't know the Spirit, and if I'm not walking in the power of the Spirit, I will not make it. I will not make it because self will not achieve this. In fact, what does John 15 says? Apart from me, you can do nothing. But with me, sky's the limit. Nothing you cannot do. With me, we can do all things. With me, we're going to walk. With me, we're, I'm going to lead you. With me, I'm going to guide you. And I want to say to you, church, as we go into this fast for 21 days, it's a long time, 21 days. Thank goodness it's not 40 days of just water unless you choose to do so. It's 21 days. 21 days, but we're led by the Spirit, and the Spirit of God will help us. And we're going to be tested. We're going to be challenged. You're going to feel fine testing in your life. You can't avoid it. It happens to all of us. No matter how good you live, you're going to be tested, challenged. You're going to be, you're going to be attacked. You're going to find yourself in deep water at times. You're going to find yourself discouraged. But notice how the Spirit of God led Jesus into the wilderness, and it was to prepare him for what was coming next. Sometimes God's going to lead you into difficult seasons, not to crush you or to break you, but to make you. Sometimes God's going to lead you into difficult seasons to transform you because you're not going to be ready for the next season if he doesn't prepare you in this season. And you could be at this moment praying, Lord, take me out of the wilderness, take me out of the wilderness. But who brought Jesus into the wilderness? The Spirit did. The Spirit did. This is why we got to know the voice of God. Again, it's one of the primary reasons we fast, to hear God's voice clearly. Could you imagine if for 40 days, Jesus prayed every day, get me out of here. This is this attack of Satan, get me out of here, get me out of here. He would have learned nothing. But it was the plan of God and the purpose of God and the destiny of God for his son for that time. 40 days in the desert with very little, just water and the Spirit and the enemy attacking him. But what comes next is extraordinary. Church, I want to encourage you. Don't get misguided by what everybody else says. It should feel good and look good all of the time. Sometimes when you're following the call of God, it's going to be difficult. It's going to be hard. But as you follow the Spirit, He will bring you through. Jesus comes out and He returns in the power of the Spirit. You see, we have a decision to make. Are we going to do it or are we just simply going to talk about it? Are we going to do what the Bible says? Are we going to do what the Word of God says? Are we just going to talk about it and just hope for the best? And then when things go wrong, pray about it and then wonder why God's not moving in the way we hope for. Because is it my way or His way? Am I going to follow Him or not? And I want to say to you today, as a church, we're going to do it. So here it is. I said, I say, vibe, it's time that we rise up. 
into all that God has for us. As we step into this year, we're going to believe for ground to break next door. This is an incredible thing, an exciting thing, but it's also an incredibly terrifying thing. Because where are we getting this money from? I mean, the Lord has to move. I mean, I can shake you for a few pounds. That's great. That's all good. But it's not going to achieve what we need to achieve. We need the Lord to move. And so for the Lord to move, you know what I've seen from start to finish? He moves through men and women just like me and you. And fasting is one of those things where we begin to decrease. We begin to humble ourselves. We begin to seek him. He begins to do a deep work in us. And then we begin to come alive in ways that we've never come alive before. And we see it in all aspects and all effects of our lives. So as we step into this 21 days of prayer and fasting, we've got it ahead of us. But we're going to step in with joy. We're going to be led by the Spirit. And we're going to come out rejoicing, I believe so. But I'm not going to say it's always going to be easy. I'm not, always going to, I'm not going to say it's not going to be without sacrifice or cost, but the reward will be great. And so let me give you a couple of things today just as we, I want to give you some stuff on fasting. So what is fasting? Well, we see it all the way through the, the Scripture from start to finish about men and women who would seek the face of God and for a short season would give up eating, not drinking. They would always drink water because you can't do it without water, but they would give up food. Now, in biblical terms, the only fast that really counts is a food fast when we give up in fact the only really true fast is water only but i'm not going to actively encourage us into that because unless you're well prepared and almost able to take 40 days off like jesus was you will not make it and have a job and life and everything else at the same time unless you've really prepared so what we've always talked about is like a daniel fast one where you reduce down you don't take the sweets you don't take the meats anymore you don't take the dairy products anymore and you just go to fruit and veg and it's incredible what the lord will do through you in fact here's what daniel said in daniel chapter 1 verse 7 when the man came back to Daniel that's where it's from they were in a foreign land at a foreign time serving a foreign king but they honored the king but they never dishonored their God and it says well king we can't eat of your things because the Lord's called us to fast the Lord's called us to only eat what he has provided for us and it says in verse 7 of Daniel chapter 1 that when the guards looked at Daniel and his friends they were healthier and better and more favored and stronger than all the other men put together because the spirit of the of, of God was upon them and I want to say to you that fasting is a weird thing because it is about physical but it's so much more about the spiritual. In fact, gym owners all around the world have figured this one out now. Have you ever seen it? If you search fasting now, you will not find biblical fasting first. You will find intermittent fasting, gym fasting, because all the fitness guys have figured it out. This thing works. You don't even have to add the spiritual onto it. It works in the physical. Now, what they've messed out on is the most important part, that it works in the spiritual, and it transforms every aspect of your life, not just one part of it. So we're not calling ourselves to a fitness fast. We are calling our, ourselves to a Jesus fast, one where we will go for him. And so I want to talk about the cost just for a moment. You see, your life will change for the next 21 days. I think for us to succeed in a fast, and I'll give you some types of fast in just a moment, but for us to succeed in a fast, we have to realize that our life will change for the next 21 days. If you, I talked about the gym. If you are a gym freak, then you may have to slow down in the gym because you can't have everything. You can't have everything. If you're going to have a hard day's work and then you're going to try to go to the gym like you always do, it's just not going to work. There's no point even trying to fast. It basically, you have to be able to sacrifice to be able to do this thing. If you're going to continue to live your life the way you've always lived it over the last 21 days or the last 21 years, then I'm sorry, again, you're not going to reap the rewards that God has for you. Because the heart of fasting is not about a diet. The heart of fasting is feasting on the Lord. So all that time that you might spend cooking or making things or eating, you devote it to God instead. And he becomes your daily bread. Remember what Jesus said? I've got food you don't even know about. I, I've got food you don't even know, know anything about. You, you think you've got to go and find it out there with five loaves and two fishes, or you've got to go to the market to get it? I feast on my Father, and he supplies all of my needs. I want to say to you, church, this makes no earthly sense whatsoever. But in the word of God, it makes total sense because the Lord supplies your needs. Uh, earlier on, I was laughing. One of the guys was, were chatting during the week. He says, the fasting's going to kill me. I says, no, it won't. Only the Lord can kill you. Fasting's going to bring you closer to God. Just trust him. Come on, I want to encourage you today. The Lord has this in, in good supply for us. The Lord has this because he knows it's good for us. But if we don't have the right mindset or we're not aware enough, we're going to 
fail before we even start. You'll be restricted and limited. you got to recognize this. I, I'm shutting myself down in a sense physically because I really want to seek the Lord spiritually. I'm telling the flesh no more. I'm telling the flesh it's time for him and him only. Uh, you may find yourself missing out on some things. You know, uh, I remember over the years, guys going, oh, come on, let's go for a Chinese. And I'm like, oh, I'd love to go for a Chinese. But I'm not going to be able to sit there and watch you eat a Chinese. So thank you, but no thank you. So you might have to restrict yourself. But again, what's 21 days if it impacts your life for a lifetime? It's absolutely nothing. It's absolutely nothing. And so you have to decide, what do you want more? Here's what I find. It will create new space in you, time with God that will change your life, and you will come out never the same. Here's what I've discovered, fresh passion, new fire in me, different mindset, different heart. Maybe you're sick of how you're feeling. Maybe you're sick of just how your Bible times are going. Maybe you're just sick of like not being confident enough to share your faith. Maybe you're just like burned out and not feeling full. This is a way to get into his presence and watch how the Lord begins to sustain you. And you discover things you didn't even know were out there. Old habits break and fall off. What if you're struggling with habits? What if you're struggling with sinful things, habitual things, just things you just cannot get shaken off? Fasting is a great way just to snap those things in two. Because the power of God just becomes real in your life and it transforms you. Dreams and visions begin to spark. That's why you have to have a diary or a book or a jotter or a phone right beside you because God's going to start to speak to you. And physically, you feel different. You just begin to change. You begin to change and every aspect of you begins to change. Okay, let me give you a few different fast types. I think the guys have it on the screen. The first one is you could have a complete fast. Again, I'm not suggesting you do that one unless you're a seasoned pro and you're just like Jesus. If you are, go for it. <laughs> Number two, liquid fast is where you have no foods, but you have lots of water and juices and things like that. That can really keep you going. Again, really awesome if you go for it, but I would encourage you, the goal is 21 days with him. The goal is not do something really awesome for two days and quit, which can happen. Now, if you do stop partway through, just adjust and keep going. Because again, the heart is to spend time with him. But again, don't reduce it down to nothing where it's just like a Bible study and there's no cost whatsoever. Come on, you've got to make it a fast. If it's going to be a fast, make it a fast. Fast something to gain something else instead. The third one is the one that a lot of us have been with and done many times over. It's the Daniel fast. And again, we've got information online and later where you can read it up in more detail. No meats or sweets or dairy, but it's all about fruit and veg and water. And you're going, really? I'm like, yeah, you can eat it as much as you want. There's way more out there than you, see, than you can believe. But if you get the right mindset and you get the right heart, you're going to be blown away, blown away with what the Lord does. Maybe it's a partial fast for you. Maybe one meal a day you're going to skip. And once you skip that meal, you'll spend it with the Lord. Or maybe you'll do like a non-food fast, which is like I'm going to fast TV, social media, YouTube, uh, tea, caffeine, all of those things. I, I'd encourage you, go for more than you think. I would encourage you, start off and uh, invite the Lord. Just like what Jesus did. He was led into the fast. He was led into the wilderness. What's the Lord leading you to? Pray about it and see what he says to you. Now, what can you expect? Let me be real just for a few moments. Uh, your flesh, you know, you, everybody's got, a, got like flesh. I mean, you obviously know you've got physical flesh. But the Bible talks about flesh being just that kind of like inward man. It's just like that, that man or that woman in you that just, just wants to go for the bad stuff, just wants to go for selfish things, just wants to live their own life. And that, that man, uh, old man or old woman, it, it loves to chase us. It loves to get at us. In fact, the, Paul says, or Jesus said, you should crucify the flesh every day. Uh, you should deny yourself. Take up your cross every day. It's the only way to live this life. Now, we know that's difficult because your flesh has demands. It wants to be fed. Do you ever notice how you go watch your favorite movie and the next thing you want to do is just eat loads? <laughs> it's just like, yeah. I mean, it's just these habits just begin to form in our lives. We're not even sure what they are. That's just the flesh just wanting more and more and more. We get into routines. We get into habits. If we were in a different environment, different location, we mightn't even think about it. But because it's our comfort zone or it's our place, we just do what we always do. We go and get our Doritos or we go and get our things. We just, we just pick out. But I want to say to you, when you seek God, he changes everything about you. So you're going to find that your flesh is going to cry out and say, no. Even before this, you may be here today, you're going, well, no, nah, I haven't even thought about fasting. I'm not going to do it. Well, I'm going to challenge you. Think about it. If Jesus did it, why don't you do it? Uh, you might find that in the first few days, if you whatever fast you go for, if you're cutting out sugar, you are going to get killer sore heads. Chances are you're going to get really bad headaches. You've got to fight through that. The easiest thing in the world to do is say, oh, well, I'm just going to go back. Just going to go back. If you go back, you start all over again. Don't do that whole thing of like a faucet for a week. I've done really well. My friends are going out for the cinema or whatever. Ah, stuff it. I'm just going to get popcorn. Uh, if you do, you've just reset everything. It's just like you're going you're gonna to get back to square one. It's no fun. Stick at it. It'll be worth it. 
I'm telling you, it's more a mental battle than a physical one. It's just your mind going, it just wants what it wants. Uh, your taste comes alive. Here's more positive. Your taste is going to come alive. I always laugh every time, and I always laugh at Nikki. She laughs at me. I don't laugh at her. She laughs at me. When I say, Nikki, these apples just taste unbelievable. You know, they were the same apples, but your taste buds just come alive again. See, the Lord does a complete work, and what he does in the physical, he's doing in the spiritual. You sense and recognize God's a voice, you begin to hear him more accurately, you begin to change, uh, I mean, you may even lose some weight, but better than that, you begin to hear his voice, you become more sensitive to his presence, you become a more alive in the word, you begin to love the things that he loves. I'm telling you, church, when you begin to fast, you begin to recognize yourself from the word of God. You go, okay, I start to feel like those guys, where they were excited about the things of God. I start, I'm feeling less numb than before. I'm feeling more alive than before. It begins to reset us. It begins to challenge us. It just begins to bring us back into his presence and bring us back into focus and attention with him. I want to encourage you, fasting is not easy, but is it worth it? Absolutely. It's absolutely incredible. Now, here's the plan, and I want to give you just a basic plan of what it might look like for you, and then I'll get our worship team to come in just a moment. But whenever we're doing a fast, again, you're probably going to have to change a lot of things that goes on. For you, it might be you're going to get up earlier. Because again, if you just want to fit a fast in with your normal everyday life, the chances are you've got no time for it. So you might find you've got to get up earlier than you normally do but it's worth it. Or you might find that your lunch break that you normally go and hang out with your friends, you sit in the car and, and you just spend it with the Lord because you want to devote that time. Or you might find at the end of the day when you usually do a few things, you sacrifice those things because I've got to dedicate this time with God because I want to make it worthwhile. I'm not just giving up food for the sake of it. Why go hungry for the sake of it? Or whatever your fast is going to be. Why give it up for the sake of it? No, I'm going to pursue Him. I'm going to spend time with Him. Again, you're going to have to push through on that because initially it's going to be no fun. Initially it may not be what you expect. you got to decide whatever fast you're going to do again, what food am I going to buy? You might have to go and get it today. You might have to do an order that comes tomorrow to get yourself lined up. It's no fun just trying to eat nothing. Come on, unless you're doing a water fast only, it's no fun like that. you got to get prepared. you got to go with wisdom and get prepared and get whatever you need for the journey. Uh, what books are you going to read? Maybe you're going to find yourself devoting your time. Here's what I do uh, for me personally, is that I take an extra hour than before. Uh, I try it at an hour minimum, and I do 15 minutes of the Bible plan. We will have the link at the end. So we do a Bible plan where everybody gets connected together, uh, which is really cool to keep us encouraged. I do 15 minutes of prayer. Uh, I then do 15 minutes of just like worship and just spending time with him and I do 15 minutes of like reading the book and I brought some books it's on the table at the back there's more on the tiny wee library around the corner but you want to get a book or something that you can delve into you've got the Bible of course but then you've got the word of God and just delve into it you begin to read you begin to get encouraged and I'm telling you 21 days of that I, 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 here's what I suggest right 21 days of maybe an hour extra with God is maybe better than your last 21 years the next 21 days, if you would stick an hour with him, that extra hour with him, that 21 hours all together is maybe better than the last few years all put together. It doesn't seem a lot, but you know how easy life is to be distracted and you know how many things come by your way. You know how easy it is to get on a Netflix show and binge it till you get to the end of it. You know how easy it is just to go hang out with your mates. But what if it was an hour with him? for the next 21 days, and you crafted that art and made up that art, it might just change your life. And you might find at the end of that time, I'm not going back to whatever it was I was going back to before. See, what times are you going to pray, and do you need to buy a book or a journal or get something prepared? Because you're going into this thing seriously. I want to read Hosea way back from the Old Testament. Hosea chapter 10, verse 12. Break new ground, plant righteousness, and harvest the fruit that your loyalty will produce for me. It's time to seek the Lord. Amen? Come on, it's time to seek God. As we start the years, we get ready for everything else. Maybe you're joining the gym. Maybe you're saving for a holiday. Let's seek God. Let's really, really seek God. And look what it says. When he comes, he will reign righteousness on you. In other words, he will reign blessings on you. Come on, we're going to stand together. I'm going to get our band to come. Uh, we're going to praise the Lord. But guys, as we go into this fast, uh, I'll put the QR code up now. Put the, the last one up for me, Maddie, the QR codes. 
so we can get people involved in it. Uh, if you want to, guys, you can hit your camera on your phone, and I'll get you into our WhatsApp group. Uh, you can also do the Bible plan. You can do both. You can do one or the other, whichever you fancy. Uh, and then on the way out, if you want to, you can grab a paper copy of what we're going to pray about every single day for the next 21 days. It will also be on the website, so you don't necessarily have to take this paper. It's just some people like this, so take it with them. But if you scan the code, you get into our WhatsApp group, it'll be part of this community where we'll encourage each other, we'll inspire each other, we'll spur each other on. Uh, if you want to get into our Bible plan, which I say everybody should do because it's really good. Even if you tell me I'm not going to fast, at least do the Bible plan with us. 21 days together. And at the end of those days, here's what you can do. There's a bit where it says, talk it over. You can write in how God's spoken to you. You can write in a word of encouragement. Now, here's what I'm going to say to you. When it comes to this Bible plan, I know what a whole lot of people does. They like to watch everything. They like to read everything, but they don't like to give anything. I want to tell you, stop being a voyeur. Get in there and write your heart, write your notes, write whatever God sent you, and be a blessing to the people around you. Don't be just someone who just watches in the background. Come on, we're in this thing together. So make sure to grab a sheet. Uh, if you want to grab that, you can get it online, of course, as well. Get on the groups, and then there are some books on the table back there. They're just some books that have blessed me. Maybe they could bless you. Or you can grab a, a book from the library on the way out. Or maybe you get your own book. I guarantee you've probably got a book in the shelf somewhere that you meant to read years ago and you never read. Why don't you read it over the next 21 days? 21 days reading that book. I would suggest you'll be pretty close to finished. Come on, let's stand together. We're going to pray. I want to pray that the Lord is inspiring you and convicting you and challenging you to fast. It's too easy just to go around in emotions. You ever find yourself just saying, oh, just another old year, just hoping the Lord will bless me. Come on, the Lord doesn't work like that. The Lord is easy to be found if you'll seek him. He's easy to be found if you seek him. Those who diligently seek me will find me. That's what the word says. But it's this consistency. It's this day after day. It's going after. And I tell you, the more you go after him, the more happy and content you become. You become different. You become changed. In fact, people will recognize the change in you and they'll say, hey, there's something different about you. This is God. This is what he does in your life. Fasting is an incredible biblical principle. It's not something to beat your head over with. Please don't do that. It's not something I'm trying to force you to do. I'm inviting you to do just in the same way as Jesus was invited by the Spirit. It says that he was led by the Spirit in. I want to pray that the Holy Spirit would lead you into this fast. And if he leads you into it, he's going to lead you out of it. And if he leads you in, he's going to lead you out in power. And I want to say it again. If you get discouraged two or three days in, reset, go again. If you start off with too hard a fast, reset, lower your sights, go again. The goal is 21 days. The goal is to sacrifice so you can feast on more. The goal is not to kill yourself. The goal is not to lose loads of weight. The goal is not to punish yourself. The goal is more of him. Come and do a new thing in me, Lord. Come and transform me. Come on, we're going to pray together. Can we do that? Church, uh, we're going to just bless you and ask that the Lord would come and move mightily. Holy Spirit, I ask you that you would come and move in every heart. I ask you, Holy Spirit, that you would come and move in every heart. You're the same Spirit that led us to Christ. I pray, Holy Spirit, you'd be the same Spirit that would lead us into all the fullness that God has for us. Lord, we believe, John 10, 10, that the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy, but the Lord has come. Jesus come to lead us into full abundance. And I believe, Lord, that fasting is part of your path because it helps us to reset from self and it helps us to get focused on you. It helps us to hold back from the things that our body screams for and life screams for and we find ourselves going, whoa, I was satisfied with a whole lot less food, but I was blessed with a whole lot more of him. Holy Spirit, I pray you're just catching our hearts today. I pray you're just catching our hearts. And we've got a generation of people that say, come on, it's too important. I'm going to rise up. I'm going to seek the face of God over this next 21 days. I pray, Lord, there's something beginning to birth in us. We are becoming heavy, heavy and burdened with the things of God. Because you say, I have to do this. I want to do this. Because the Spirit of God is moving on me. Church, would you do one thing? Would you put your hand in your heart just for a moment? I want to pray for us. Lord, I pray for our hearts today. And I recognize our hearts are our minds, but this is just uh, as a place of contact. But Lord, I pray for our hearts today. I pray, Lord, that our hearts are deceitfully wicked. The Word says, and no man can know it, but the Word of God can separate our hearts and can bring good from bad. I pray, Lord, as we would go into this fast, let it be when we go in, not if we go in. Lord, I pray that when we go into this fast, that the Word of God would transform our hearts, our minds. 
and we would discover things about you and we discover things about ourselves that we didn't even know were real. We didn't even know was possible. And Lord, that we would come out different, ready for the mission. When Jesus came out, he was ready to serve his Father like never before. Signs, wonders, and miracles just flowed naturally, naturally. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would lead us into this wilderness experience. It's a wilderness-like experience for 21 days. But it would not be without purpose. It would not be in vain. But it would be planned, and it would be perfect, and it would be good. And Lord, you would strengthen our hearts and minds today for this journey. Strengthen our hearts and minds for the journey. We will not give up. We will not quit. But Lord, we will allow the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us. Thank you for your grace today, Lord. Come on, your grace sustains us. It's your grace that's going to lead us, the grace of the Lord that's going to transform us and bring us forward. Lord, multiply and increase every life, every heart. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. Come on, we're going to worship the Lord. Come on, I'm praying that he's turning you around and that he is transforming you forward. In Jesus' mighty name.